So based on what you know about the negotiations so far, what can you tell Americans out there about the possibility, the likelihood there's actually a change in border policy? Well, I talked to a couple of key negotiators yesterday, and uh, they feel like they're making some progress. But I know Senator Schumer thinks there's going to be some deal cut behind closed doors and then jam it through the Senate and then jam the House. That's not going to happen. Um, but we are making some progress. But this isn't just about money. This is about policies that will actually stem the flow of mass migration across the border, along with the drugs and everything that goes with it. You know there's pressure on the White House from the left that they think that these are very extreme proposals, at least what they've heard floated so far. I want to play something from Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, who says that this is going to take us back to a very difficult, dark time. Here's what she says. It is imperative that my Senate colleagues and the White House understand what is on the table are policies so extreme that if enacted, it would literally be the most exclusionary, restrictive immigration legislation since the racial quota laws of the 1920s, literally turning the clock back 100 years. Now, progressives have sent a letter to the White House saying that they object to things like near mandatory incarceration for anyone who shows up here seeking asylum. They say Republicans want to undermine a multiracial democracy. How do you explain what Republicans are asking for? Shannon, all we're asking for, for the president to do is to actually enforce the law. And uh, now that we've got the uh, purse strings of Congress that Congress controls, we're hoping to use that as leverage to change those policies. What we're asking for is humane, orderly, and legal immigration. Right now, the only people benefiting from the status quo are the uh, human smugglers, the criminal organizations that are getting richer by the day, along with the drug cartels. And for the last three years, President Biden has demonstrated that he simply didn't care. Well, apparently now he cares. We've got his attention and we intend to do something about it. OK, to that point, you know what the White House says, that on day one when he became president, he offered up an immigration proposal and that you all have said no thank you to everything he has put on the table. Here's the White House press secretary speaking to that this week. They said no to border agents. They've said no to new technology to fight fentanyl. They said no to additional troops. And they voted on eliminating 2,000 customs and border patrol agents. That is what Republicans have done. Now, on top of that, one House Democrat said this week that you're actually trying to shut down legal immigration. Here's his take. What is so wrong? is that we actually have Republican lawmakers trying to make legal immigration more difficult. And that is a gift, frankly, to folks like Mexican cartels who will actually benefit from these Republican policies. OK, so you mentioned that this administration is benefiting the cartels. He says it's the GOP who's doing it. How do you respond? Well, you know, we finally seen, uh, according to the polls that you cited earlier, that the American people are not fooled by what uh, the propaganda coming out of the White House and, uh, you know, including the Secretary of Homeland Security, who has repeatedly lied to Congress and the American people by saying the border is secure. It is not secure. And uh, we have a, a historic inflection point here in negotiations. Uh, for the last, uh, well, the years I've been in the Senate for quite a while now, all we've done is talk about it. But mm -hmm. now we intend to use this leverage uh, to do something about it. OK, so another poll I want to cite that came in this week, brand new out this morning, um, asking about the president's job approval on the border. And it is two to one people disapproving, thinking he is not doing well. So there are cynics out there who say Republicans don't actually want to help solve this issue, especially going into an election year because it is such a bad topic, a bad issue for the president. Is Washington that broken? I think that uh, th those considerations are purely secondary. I live and work in Texas, and uh, obviously we have borne the brunt of the B Biden open border policies for years now. And uh, the governor and uh, legislature have done everything they can using the tools they have to do something about it. But we want to stop the flow of humanity coming across the border, the drugs, the fact that 300,000 children have been placed with, uh, with sponsors in the United States and the Biden administration has lost track of them. This is a catastrophe. And it's as a result of the Biden open border policies. We're going to use this opportunity to change that. The president has failed to faithfully execute the laws as required of him by the Constitution. 
and we intend to use every tool in the toolbox to try to make him do his job. Um, you have said no reason to rush something that can't get passed in the House. So while they're working out what you will get to vote on in the Senate over the House, they want something much closer to H.R. 2, much tougher. Do you think there is something that you guys could agree to, Senate Democrats, the White House, the House GOP that would actually get passed? Well, I know that Speaker Johnson is being briefed by some of our negotiators. Uh, and, uh, you know, what he can pass in the House is going to be, frankly, up to him. But we do need to be aware of the fact that this is not just an exercise in the Senate. It's not just sen the Senate and the president agreeing to something. It's something that can actually pass the House and be signed into, into law. So this is a very delicate and difficult negotiation. Uh, but we're not going to let this opportunity pass without doing everything we can to secure the border. Okay, something that did get done this week was the National Defense Authorization Act. And part of that, though, included uh, an extension of Section 702 of the Foreign Service Surveillance Intelligence, Foreign Inf Intelligence Surveillance Act, FISA. Uh, and it essentially, it's meant to track people that are foreign threats, foreign citizens. And yet, um, your colleague Mike Lee is among those who say it is involving American citizens and violating their Fourth Amendment rights. He says this in an op-ed, the FBI has used Section 702 to conduct warrantless backdoor searches of the private electronic communications of American citizens. It has done so not just sporadically and by accident, but quite deliberately and on hundreds of thousands of occasions. Now, like Senator Lee, you're a distinguished attorney. You're a Texas Supreme Court justice. You served as the attorney general. If this is, as he alleges, actually happening, blatantly unconstitutional, why not say it is time to rein in 702, it is time for major reforms when these are American citizens' rights who are being impacted? Well, I agree with Senator Lee that there have been, been abuses, and I'm certainly willing to enact reforms that will make those much less likely. Director Ray has changed the policies at the FBI. Compliance is up to roughly 98 percent. It's not good enough until it's 100 percent. But we cannot intentionally blind ourselves to the threats from foreign adversaries. Uh, this is, as you said, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. This is the, these are the crown jewels necessary to protect our country against uh, unprecedented threats from all over the world. And so I hope uh, we will fix it um, and not nix it. Uh, and I expect that will happen in the coming months. Okay, while I've got your legal hat on, let me ask you about impeachment. You've said you support the inquiry. The House has now officially decided and voted to launch that. Um, but here's what the Democrat over in the House who led the impeachment against President Trump said this week. Jamie Raskin. There are thousands and thousands of pages of evidence, but all of the evidence demonstrates uh, beyond any reasonable doubt that uh, President Joe Biden is not guilty of any uh, impeachable offense that we can determine. He says there's no smoking gun. You know, even if the House sends this to you, it goes nowhere in the Senate. So do you worry that this is going to look political and be used against your party in 2024? Well, Democrats have, uh, have introduced impeachment into our politics uh, by trying to impeach the former president, President Trump, two different times unsuccessfully. The basic reason why I support the inquiry is because this investigation needs to continue. It seems like we're peeling back layers of an onion and the investigation is revealing new and, um, and very serious uh, evidence uh, along the way. So um, this also will enhance the ability of the, uh, of the, of the House to enforce those subpoenas in court and something that Biden administration has been resisting along the way. So I think it's a little premature for our Democratic friends to be uh, declaring victory while the investigation is ongoing. It's one of many things we'll be tracking into the new year. Senator Cornyn, we appreciate your time. If we don't see you before then, Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas to you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.